Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We have been uh, getting our life first alert forecast from Joe Winters throughout this series. Let's take a look at his last one. Now, the first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Joe Winters. Good morning, St. Mark's. This is Joe Winters with your last in a series of life first alert forecast. We had sun peeking through the clouds at 625 this morning on a beautiful Easter Sunday. I hope you're having a chance to relish this special occasion with family and friends today. And don't forget to stop by the crossings for some pancake, eggs and sausage with the St. Mark's Youth Mission Team as you celebrate Easter. Now, the forecast is calling for periods of sun no matter where you go. The sun's rising changes everything as you go about your day in the power of hope. As temperatures rise in the days and weeks ahead, go ahead and throw open the windows and enjoy the fresh breezes that will blow through your life. Now the extended forecast, it's looking bright as you continue to bask in the warmth of new life. Even as threatening fronts and cloudy skies pass through, don't forget that the sun continues to shine both in you and through you. That's the life first alert forecast from myself and on my entire family. Happy Easter, St. Mark's. Now back to you, Pastor. All right, let's say thank you to Joe Winters for doing that over this series. It's such a good sport to do that. And uh, what a great forecast for us. Uh, you know, the sun will shine in all circumstances of your life. When the sun is in you, the sun will also shine through you. Well, this week, one of the members of my men's group uh, sent me an email. He was so excited about Easter Sunday. He said, uh, we get to celebrate the day we were set free. And I love that. Why don't you turn to someone right now and say, today is the day we were set free. Why don't you say with me, hallelujah, hallelujah. He is risen. He is indeed risen because the early church said indeed because they didn't want to just have people believe it was in word only. He had actually risen from the dead. We've been in this sermon series called God Happens in the last six weeks. As we talk about God happening beyond Sunday, whether that's on Friday game nights or in our pain, in the daily grind, as we serve, we've been talking about how do we experience God beyond the walls of the church. That Sunday morning changes Monday morning. And if Sunday morning changes Monday, Monday morning, how does God happen in the resurrection? What would it mean if we have a resurrection faith and live beyond the walls of our church? Well, today let's get into that. You can get on the back of your uh, bulletin and look at some of the information there. Keep up, uh, keep from falling asleep on this Easter Sunday. Uh, the first of the points is today, if you want to experience the power of God in the resurrection, how does God happen in the resurrection? then you need to open your mind to God's power. When the women first go to the tomb, they, uh, they expect themselves to be going to basically a grave. They expect to find a body that they're going to anoint with oil. Uh, they expect that uh, Jesus is dead. He's had a great run. He's he'd been a great teacher, a great miracle worker, uh, the great healings, but this time is over. All that's done, and now he's dead, and he's not coming back. Well, clinging to their memories, they go down to the grave. But what they experience is something totally different than what they expected. As they stood there, puzzled, the Bible says, two men suddenly appeared to them, clothed in dazzling robes. The women were terrified and bowed with their faces to the ground. The men asked, why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? It is a mind-blowing paradigm shift of eternal proportions. Mary and Mary, Joanne, and the other women were the first to experience God happening in the resurrection. The question the angels ask is an important question, an epic question for us today. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? I would say that all of us must confess if we come here today that we've been looking for life in a lot of different places. Maybe you're tired of, the, of living a purposeless life. Uh, perhaps you're tired of the, the toll that the treadmill takes on you, tired of buying things that don't satisfy, tired of, it, of achieving things that in the end don't amount to a hill of beans, tired of the futility of it all. Maybe you've been settling for, for lesser dreams, for cheaper visions, for blue light specials, but that can change. It's never too late to change uh, a lesser dream for the ultimate dream. And so, maybe you've come here today out of tradition. 
Maybe you came because someone invited you. Maybe you came because you wanted the sausages at Easter breakfast. Maybe you came because it's just the thing to do at Easter. But God wants to invite you today to open your mind to the possibilities of his power to raise Christ from the dead and what he can do in each of our lives. Because he is risen. He is risen indeed. By Easter morning, Jesus was supposed to be a memory. He was supposed to be dead. Pilate ordered his death. The uh, Roman soldiers carried it out. He was placed into a tomb. Uh, The tomb was guarded by a a security detail to make sure no one would steal Jesus' body. He died a horrific death of crucifixion. That's pretty well a given. Everybody kind of understands that, but what of his resurrection? What about it? Uh, Some of us, you know, are here today who still have doubts in our mind that Jesus would be alive. Lee Strobel was an atheist, an investigative journalist with the Chicago Tribune. He was an atheist in this way. He he wanted to set out to disprove the resurrection. He wanted to gather evidence uh, to prove that the resurrection was just a fairy tale. What he found was evidence, the evidence far outweighed anything else, that the, the truth was that the resurrection did occur. And in his studies of biblical and non-biblical material, he found the evidence of the case for Christ, a movie that you might uh, have out in the, the see out in the theaters today. Here's Lee Strobel giving a summary of his account of the resurrection of Christ. All right, so I love what uh, he does there. It's mental, it's logical, it's evidentiary. And uh, those four E's help us to to look and say, did Christ rise from the dead? When you open your mind to God's power, you can experience God again this Easter, to have trust in what the Bible says. To experience God this Easter, we need to open our mind to God's power, but also our heart 
to God's grace. The angels continued their message. He isn't here. He's risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and that he would rise again on the third day. To experience the resurrection, it must also happen to us. Jesus, uh, the angel said, remember what he told you. Christ speaks to us individually. The fact of the resurrection only becomes real when we recognize the significance for us personally. Each of us is a sinner. We've all fallen short of God's glory. The Bible tells us that in Romans 3, 23. But the real question is, when you stand before a holy God, when you stand before the God of the universe, what's your plan? What will you say? What is your plan? The Bible tells us there's two ways to get to heaven. One is plan A. That is to live the perfect life. That is uh, a performance plan. That means that you live from start to finish, from the word go until the day you die, uh, never having sinned, uh, never saying a wrong word, uh, never doing a wrong thing, not one, living a perfect life. It's like if you were to take the Baseball Hall of Fame and you were to say, well, we're only going to let batters in now who, who batted 1,000 for their entire career and played an errorless uh, career. Okay, well, the best batters in baseball only hit about 300. So with the truth about us is that none of us can match up to plan A. So because of that, God created plan B. Plan B was to trust in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Because Jesus was the only perfect man who ever lived because he was God wrapped in human flesh. And when we put our trust in him, when we experience, develop a relationship, a personal relationship with Christ, we get in on his goodness. Now, this isn't something that's just tacked on to your life. It's not something that's just added in addition to your old life. God wants to give you a brand new life. Have you ever seen um, you know, in the stores, even today, the packages that say new and improved? Seen that, right? You know what that really means? Same old junk with a new title, right? I mean, that's kind of what it is. But because there's not much that's new in the world. It's been repackaged, repositioned, retitled, relabeled. But God says, I want to give you a brand new life. I want you to have the chance to start again. Well, that's incredible. So think about it this way. I, I don't, I'm a novice golfer. I don't play golf too much, two or three, four times a year at the most. That's in a good year. But there is a term from golf that I've come to love. It's a term called a mulligan. That's a great term if you ever played golf. Because guys like me whose shot, the first shot is so stinking terrible that it bounces off a tree and hits my partner in the head, that's the kind of shot where the guy says, well, you just take a mulligan, you know? And so a mulligan means, if you're not acquainted with golf, uh, that in a friendly game of golf, not competitive, but a friendly game of golf, if you hit a terrible shot, you can get another shot. And you don't count the first shot. You get a do-over. I love mulligans. I'd like to take one on just about every hole, pra practically. But here's the idea. Jesus wants to give you a mulligan. Jesus wants to give you an opportunity for a do-over, for a new beginning, a brand new life. Jesus says, you know that stupid thing that you did, you regret it from the past, the thing that you wish you hadn't done that way, the dumb decision, the, the, the bad move that you made, a sin, fault, or failure, whatever you want to call it, Jesus says. He says, I, I want to erase that and wipe the slate clean. I want to give you a new beginning, a do-over. And it doesn't matter if you're young or old. God has a, a plan for you. And so if you open your mind to the power of God's resurrection, but receive his grace to forgive you, you might say, I'm a person who I don't think there's forgiveness for. You don't know my life. You don't know the kind of person I am. God says to you today, through Jesus Christ, through the power of his resurrection, there can be a new you because he is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen if you want to experience the power of the resurrection, if you want to experience God this Easter, how does God happen this Easter? Open your mind to his power. Open your heart to his grace. But thirdly and finally, open your life to his love. So the women go back to the disciples. They've been to the tomb. They go back to the disciples. And uh, they tell them everything that happened. And guess what? Women, uh, you're not going to believe this, women. You're not going to believe this. The men didn't believe them. 
Okay, you're not, I'm sure you don't believe that. It's never happened to you. But the, the men didn't believe them. And so finally, Peter, who's the first to always dive in, right? He is the first one to, to tell Jesus he's the Christ. He's the first one to, uh, to walk on the water with Jesus. He's the one to deny Jesus. He runs down to the tomb. And here's what Scripture says. It says, as he ran to the tomb, stooping, he peered and he, in and he saw the empty linen wrappings. When he, then he went home again, wondering what had happened. Another translation says, wondering what this meant. Maybe that's you today. If I open my mind that God may have raised Jesus from the dead, if I open my heart to say, oh God, okay, what if you can forgive me? What then? Okay, what, what do I do with my life? What does that look like? You know, some of us are in a survival mode with our life. Some of us, you know, are just gritting our teeth and grinding our way through. God says, I want more for you. I have more for you than that. It means, uh, and I, I can tell you what the early church did. The early church, Peter and the others, they lived an Easter faith that turned into a life of love. A non-Christian historian, a non-Christian historian said of the early church in the first century, see how they love. They were filled with love. Well, yesterday, uh, our six-and-a-half-month-old granddaughter had her first taste of Gerber's baby food. It's awesome, you know? And uh, all these first things are really great, right? And this was sweet potatoes. And she didn't really like it, uh, but, you know, she'll get used to it as time goes along. When I was little in that age, my parents served me Gerber's strained spinach. Yummy, right? Oh, that's awesome. Gerber's strained spinach, yeah. I, I, it was yummy because I didn't know any better. Um, and as, you know, as time went along, well, by the way, I think parents who serve that to their kids probably ought to be tortured or something, you know. I, I mean, you know, I, I thought it was good back then today. I think it tastes like turtle spit, you know. I mean, that's kind of what we're talking about here. But as I grew up, I discovered in elementary school SpaghettiOs. Now that's an improvement over strained spinach. And when I got into high school and teenage years, I discovered Arby's. Now we're talking, they have the beef, okay. I just want you to know that. So as time went along, I said, there's something better in life. And even today, I've had great foods like Five Guys, which is now in Cedar Rapids, right? And Olive Garden and Panera Bread, all these great things. But I think God brought you here today to let you in on a little secret. The secret is this, that there is something better in life for you. A life of love, a life of grace, a life filled with God's Holy Spirit to pour out of you so that you can experience the resurrection. God happens in you in the resurrection, but also through you. We uh, have received this, um, this gift that you heard about, this matching gift from the St. Mark's Foundation, by the way, which St. Mark's Foundation is this entity. It's kind of an endowment which supports the ministry of St. Mark's, and uh, they, they do that based on uh, bequest gifts and planned estate giving, that sort of thing. And you can all, you know, give to that one day. We hope you will. But uh, they've given this $12,500 matching gift for our Share the Harvest uh, experience. And uh, so we're within today, going into today, $9,000 from our goal. And I believe that that's going to happen this weekend through the generosity of the St. Mark's members. Um, but here's the deal. That's all in response to God's love. These things are happening because of God's love happening to people's lives. And so it changes how you view your money. That I want to give generously out of my abundance so those who are in need can have. And my time, I want to give generously out of my time. We still need plenty of volunteers to make that happen. You can sign up today online to make it happen. But it's going to be a great day, April 28th and 29th. It's going to be buzzing. More than 1,000 people walking around pouring these you know, different ingredients in to package these meals which are going to go to people who are in drought-stricken Africa, one of the worst droughts that we, has been in the history of our lives. People in Haiti who are in need. God can do great things when we respond to his generosity in our lives. Listen, uh, during this sermon series, we've been using this logo. Uh, this is our new St. Mark's logo. If you haven't seen it yet, it was up on billboards in Cedar Rapids with our sermon series and things like that. But the real importance of it is of what it means for the future of our mission of a church. Notice that the cross, which is supposedly wrapped around the world, is also an intersection. We call it the intersection of faith and life. And we live as a church under the cross of Christ. 
That's where we find ourselves, at the intersection of faith and life. And God has already deployed you at those intersections of where people are needing his love and grace and mercy. The church is already out there. The church is already uh, in place. You've been put in place in your families, in your neighborhoods, in your schools, in your places of work for God to do work through you. And when you take that love out in the world, it brings the resurrection into the world, into people's lives. We're called to go to the tombs of society and to speak to those who have aching hearts, to speak to those who have broken lives, to the troubled child, to the hurried and huddled masses who are seeking and longing for something alive. When we speak into their hearts and when we love them with grace and mercy, we bring light to the darkness, hope to the hopeless. We bring the dead to life. I love there's a new song on the Christian radio station that I've just really enjoyed, and I sing it after I hear it, usually for a day or more. It's called uh, Dry Bones. Uh, we, uh, let me try to sing, sing a little bit of it. We call out to dry bones, come alive, come alive. We call out to dry bones, come alive, come alive. And I just love that because that's what God is calling us to this Easter season to call out to the, the places where there are tombs in society, call to the dead, to call them to life, to experience Christ. Well, this Easter, my prayer is that you open your mind to the power of God's resurrecting power and that you open your hearts to receive his grace into your heart and that you open your life to live a life of love that others might experience the good news. Sunday morning changes Monday morning because he is risen he is risen indeed. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for your resurrection power. As we experience it here today, we pray that your hope is reborn in us, that we might treasure you above all things and live for your glory. God, as our minds and hearts and lives are open to you and your, your message for us today, use us in a way that can bring your kingdom to the world, your love, your grace, your forgiveness, your hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.